I'm Dan at VintageVelo.org and today we're going to be taking a close look and riding this awesome 1953 vintage Italian Dobardo Grand Sport. Um, it's an excellent bike, very old, very vintage, just the kind of thing we love here at Vintage Fellows. Um, let me take you through what we have here, okay? Uh, so, uh, tubing, full Columbus SL throughout with um, Campagnolo uh, forged dropouts front and back. Um, as we would expect with a bike of this quality. Um, and also of note, 1953, the group set as such doesn't technically exist. Um, Campagnolo make a handful of parts. Uh, they are on this bike, uh, but they don't make a full group set. So that doesn't really exist if we think of it today. Uh, so we have a grand, grand, Campagnolo Grand Sport uh, rear derailleur here, Campagnolo front derailleur, um, obviously Campagnolo uh, bottom bracket as well, uh, but the um, crank set on the front, uh, I believe is made by Magistroni and uh, it's uh, fully pantographed up as Torpado. Um, and uh, Campagnolo uh, shifters, uh, the headset is made by Weya Soto, uh, and up front there we have the epically cool forged alloy Cinelli champion uh, bar and stem combination. Uh, now, they're quite something for the time, um, and I was really pleased. This bike came all original, all as is. Um, it was in a very, very poorly state, um, so it had to be thoroughly restored. I did think long and hard about that restoration because I really wanted to keep it as it was, um, but unfortunately, the paint was flaking off. You could take it off with your thumbnail. Uh, there was loads of rust on the chrome, um, so that it was, there was just no choice. It had to go back, uh, be re-chromed, uh, and repainted and built up from there using the parts that came with the bike. Um, also on here, uh, we have a beautiful uh, Brooks leather saddle uh, and Brooks bar tape as well. And interestingly, uh, the brakes on these, they are side pull uh, rather than center pull, but they're side pull uh, universal extra 51s. Uh, these at the time, ignore the universal name, these were cutting edge, side pull, lightweight brakes. Um, they look good, they work exactly how we expect them to. Uh, mechanically, they don't stop you very well, um, but I think that's just a period thing with the bike. Um, the wheels on these, uh, Campagnolo hubs, uh, mounted to a 36 spoke Nisi rim. Uh, they came with Nisi rims to start off with, but they were splitting uh, between the eyelets. So I had to source some original replacement Nisi rims with the correct number of spoke holes and have them relaced with stainless steel spokes. It gives me a little confidence as I ride. Uh, also, we've got 28 mil Velaflex um, tubulars on there as well. So you feel nice and planted on the road. Um, now, our old favorite, uh, the uh, almost straight cut uh, rear block is on here. Uh, we've got five speeds with an enormous range of 15 to 21 on the back. Um, but it's okay, because we can always use the front, which has an also epically good uh, 49 to 50, no, sorry, 47 on the inner to 50 on the outer. So, uh, yeah. I'm not going up any mountains on this because, you know, there's there's just not enough gearing on here. If I was, yeah, I'd change the rear block straight away and maybe try and get that 40, uh, 47 on the front down to a 42. Then we'd be all right. Um, but as it is, um, it's as it came. I kind of like the originality um, a lot on this bike. Um, so uh, I think it's time. Uh, the sun's just coming out. Let's get out there and ride. Okay, so we're back here in the south of France. It's a lovely early autumnal day. Uh, a really, really nice day to get out there and ride a vintage Dobard or Grand Sport. Uh, been working on my Italian. Uh, now, the bike here, we'll get straight to the frame details. Uh, it is Columbus SL, so it rides really, really well as we would expect from a top end frame. Um, geometry, a little bit more um, lazy than modern day equivalent. It's a little bit more stretched out, uh, very, very comfortable. Um, it's still very racy for the time, uh, but uh, a bit more of a grand tour if you were comparing it with modern geometry. Uh, but for the time, this is right up there. This is your Ferrari F1 bike of the time, uh, competing directly with Cinelli Grand and uh, uh, Bianchi for the top spot. 
Uh, now the colour on this uh, is worth noting, it's Tobado's version of Celeste Blue. Now, not to be mixed up uh, with Bianchi Celeste, uh, Topado Celeste Blue is a pearlescent baby blue. Um, a very, very pretty thing. Uh, you can certainly hang this on your wall, especially with the chrome lugs, cream detailing. Uh, it is very, very nice. Um, of note, it's restored by, um, a couple of years ago, about four years ago, um, and it's starting to mellow nicely. Um, and it's turning into a bike you really just can get out there and ride. I think when something's freshly restored, maybe you baby it a bit too much, but you've got to get it out there, get a few little, uh, you know, dings in the paintwork from the odd little stone chip, things like that, uh, and just soften the edges off a little bit, and then it becomes uh, a much, much nicer bike to own. Um, of note, uh, that's not a Ginelli Champion bar and stem. It is, of course, Ambrosio uh, Champion forged stem uh, and alley uh, bars. Of note, the bars are obviously very, very narrow. These feel like they're like 38 or 36 centimeters wide. They are incredibly narrow bars, um, but that's kind of what they did back in the day. And the also, uh, we do have uh, an awesome uh, front bottom mount, which we'll come onto in a little bit. as a brand and a maker and sponsor of excellent bikes. Um, you know, they've been around for uh, well, since the turn of the century, uh, but definitely hit their peak in the 50s, uh, where they had their own uh, professional peloton team uh, that uh, competed um, at the Giro d'Italia at that time. Um, rider of note, Aldo Moza, will be Francesco Moza's elder brother. I think he came fourth or fifth in one of the Giros on a Torpedo, uh, which is really cool. Now, it must be pointed out, the brand went a bit soft and flabby uh, in the 70s and 80s. Uh, the bikes they made then, I mean, they're perfectly good, you know, um, nothing up with them, but nothing great about them either. Uh, they went a bit porky, a bit flabby around the sides. Now, uh, they still exist as a brand, but they've been bought out a couple of times, uh, and uh, they mostly make mountain bikes and electric bikes. Um, so nothing that uh, goes back to the uh, uh, the great days of the Torpedo Grand Sport. Um, so uh, a shame that one. Um, but there we go. Also, of course, I'm out today uh, in the period wall. This is period. It's itchy as hell. Um, so uh, kind of goes with the territory of this kind of bike. As I mentioned earlier, this bike's equipped with uh, Campagnola Grand Spore um, rear derailleur uh, and front derailleur. And uh, I've got to say, they are really, really good for the time. The Grand Spore rear derailleur on this one uh, is the very early type with the straightforward round discs uh, as the jockey wheels. Uh, no cancellation as we would expect it. Uh, and that's exactly how they came as new. Um, and uh, does a really, really good job of changing gear. No fusses, no ghost shifts. Uh, it's really good. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not changing between a lot of cogs, um, but uh, um, it does everything that you kind of want it to do. And that's 1953. Sometimes I wonder what everyone else was thinking in the 70s and 80s with some of the terrible stuff that was made then. Who knows? However, the brakes, you know, they'll slow you eventually, but they're not dynamic. The only thing this uh, Torpano doesn't want to do is slow down. The brakes I'm going to describe are progressive in that you're going to pull on them and then you pull on them and then you pull on them some more and then you might just lose a little bit of speed. Uh, but other than that, the whole package is excellent.
Okay, so we're at the end of today's ride. Um, been out there for a couple of hours. Um, lovely afternoon on the uh, vintage Torpedo. Um, it's gone really great, as it always does, that bike. Um, strangely, I bought it because um, it came with the uh, original um, front buckler cage um, mounted onto those Ambrosio Champion uh, bars. Um, and it just looked epically cool, um, being from the 50s and still fitted with its period 50s racing kit. Um, also, interestingly of note uh, on the frame, uh, on the Campagnolo dropouts, the eyelets have been removed at some point. No idea why uh, or who did it, but um, you know, always um, some interesting history uh, uh, on old bikes. Um, it's kind of cool. Um, now, how that bike rides in comparison with, say, uh, Legnano, um, yeah, um, I'd say it pips it. Um, it's definitely just that bit more racy, a bit faster. Um, feels a bit more lively, but then again, this is a, a purebred racer of the time. Um, up against a champion Del Monte Bianchi, harder to say, probably about the same. Haven't yet had the fun of a Cinelli Super Quarter, um, which I'm sure at some point I will, but it'll uh, be fascinating to go head to head with that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed uh, today's video. If you did, do like and subscribe uh, for more vintage bike riding uh, fun builds and rides. Anyway, thanks a lot. See you soon.